Hello and welcome to this module. In this module, we will talk about evolution of containers, Docker and Kubernetes. Let's understand the traditional shipping problem. Let's forget about software for a moment and concentrate on a traditional shipping problem of goods. Let's say I have some materials to ship from one place to another that contains my electronic equipment, piano, beer barrels, car, some general materials, explosives, etc. And to transport this material, I have a number of transport medium available like cranes, trains, waterways, buses, trucks, etc. Now, the problem here is all these things have a dependency between them like there is a dependency between the goods and there is a dependency on the transport medium cars can't be put along with explosives right pianos can't be put along with beer barrels and there is no perfect transport to carry all these things together for example i cannot hang my piano by the crane and similarly i cannot transport the explosives into into a truck or a car that's the traditional shipping problem that we have now the solution to the shipping problem came with the advent of shipping containers so they were invented in 1956 by a person named Malcolm McLean who is an who was an American trucker or a businessman now the good thing was with this containers uh, is they can be transported on any medium available. These containers can be transported over trucks, over uh, trains, over ships, anything. Okay, so what this guy did, he standardized the dimensions of the container. Standard shape, size and shape has been decided. And this these containers acted as isolated environment for similar type of goods. That means you can put all your explosive in one container and you can put all your beer barrels onto another container or you can put some similar things also in same container. Okay. So now the infrastructure provider don't have to worry what's inside the container. He just has to, he just have to transport the container as a unit and this invention has changed the way of trucking in America back in 60s. Now we have a same problem with softwares. We want to ship the software from point A to point B reliably and automatically, right? So let us understand the software shipping problem in the same context. So for example, you have, as a, as a part of software, you can have a static website, a user database, an API endpoint, front end web UI or background workers. And these software components may need to run on any of these machines like a development VM, production cloud, a QA server, customer appliances, anyone. Here also we have inter package dependency, which means my one library is not compatible with some other component of the software okay for example this uh, web ui can be developed on uh, ruby plus rails plus sas plus unicorn and this static website can be developed on uh, an, an nginx server plus it needs some more libraries and dependencies like open ssl bootstrap mod security similarly uh, my uh, database uh, vms require postgre uh, SQL and uh, something else and my background worker let's say require Python 3 and PyRedis and libcurl all these packages now it is possible that if I run these uh, softwares or these components into a single machine 
okay so there can be inter package dependency this package is not compatible with this library okay this open ssl version is not compatible with this uh, r version here okay and there is a dependency on the underlying infrastructure also right for example this web u web ui may work on your development vm but may not work on the production cloud in software terminology this is called as metrics from hell and developers keep tracking keep tracing these uh, these um, uh, parameters in this matrix that which component is working where and what are the dependencies between the components and this is a very complex task for the developers now docker eliminates this matrix from hell so docker is the name of a company an organization that was founded in 2013 by a person named solomon hikes so this organization they basically defined the standard container format for softwares for software programs to run on top of infrastructure so they defined that how a container or how a code and all its dependencies can run inside an isolated environment which is called as a container and uh, the the image file for this container is known as docker image file and when this container image runs it becomes container at run time so now it is possible to run these components separately inside isolated environment so you can run a static website inside a container and on the same system you can run a web a web ui a background workers user db analytics anything in their isolated environment and nobody will produce a conflict for the others because all the dependencies and packages are limited inside this container environment only in fact all the material that i presented to you in this module was taken as a reference from the solomon hikes dot scale event in 2013 so now on top of your infrastructure all you need is a container engine or a container runtime which we have already discussed in the earlier module so uh, this container engine can be deployed on top of operating system or on on top of a hypervisor and uh, it is sufficient to run containers so it gives a shared operating system to all the containers that are running on top of it okay and uh, in case of docker as a container engine it is also called as docker engine so there are some other container engines also available in the market apart from docker but whenever we talk about container engine by default it means docker engine till now now how this environment isolation is possible for which we have just talked about right so here is the two step process so a developer builds containers and the infrastructure engineer deploys containers and how it happens so when a developer builds a containers it is assumed that the source code or the application is already coded in any language of his choice .net java anything any any coding uh, framework the developer can choose and can make his his or her application in his system and once the source code is ready then he she has to create a docker file with instructions and build a docker image once the docker image is built then they have to push the docker image to a registry once the docker image has been pushed into the registry the job of the developer ends here now the infrastructure person or the maintenance engineer or the configuration engineer pulls the docker image and run in a container so basically when this docker image or the container image gets executed in your environment it converts into a running container so now you get an app running with all the dependencies inside the container only let us see this process in more detail so this diagram summarizes the process by the developer and by the infrastructure engineer here you see this is the example of a sample docker file in this docker file this section includes the ins instructions so this means 
start this file from uh, an alpine base image which is a miniature form of a, of a, of linux okay uh, run the update of the image run add vm and add curl so vim and curl are two packages that the developer wants to add in his container with this image okay and once the packages are added then this is the source code which is being copied from uh, the from the source to the destination directory slash opt slash bin of the alpine base image and uh, once all everything is done then a message will be displayed image created so this is the docker file that contains the instruction and the source code right now once this is done then docker build will build the docker image and docker push will push the image to the uh, repository so this is a sample repository which you can uh, take for the understanding purpose once the image has been pushed now the infrastructure engineer has to just pull the image from the same repository and run in the environment so docker is the command so this cli is available in in any infrastructure which which contains the docker engine so docker run and this command will pull the image this the same image and run it on your infrastructure but as we say we are not supposed to run and manage individual containers via docker cli in a production environment why okay this is this is just a uh, just a process to pull a single container image but in production environment there are there may be hundreds or thousands of individual containers running on top of your infrastructure so you are not supposed to manage every container file individually using docker cli that's where kubernetes comes into picture so just like a concert master in an orchestra who manages all the musicians okay who gives instructions to all the musicians kubernetes is the orchestrator or concert master for the containers so kubernetes acts as a as a manager and it manages all the containers that are running in your in infrastructure <laughs>